We just got a fresh look at a new Tesla. It's not the standard Model 3 or Model Y, it's what comes next. Tesla is in an interesting spot right now. Public perception, sales, all those things are on a bit of a roller coaster depending on when you check. But from a product standpoint, which is what I personally care about most, they've released a ton of new features and updates, more than they usually do, and it makes me look to the future of Tesla a little bit differently because, well, there's a lot that seems to be in the works. It's clear that customers and shareholders want Tesla to do certain things. What those things are really depends from person to person. Over the last few years, especially the last few months, Tesla has done quite a bit. We got the refreshed Model S and X with the slight facelift. They brought in a real-world drive Cybertruck and then took it away. They updated the Model 3 and Model Y along with different variants inside those. And the latest thing is that standard range Model 3 and Model Y. The Model Y, of course, being the more interesting of the two because of how different it is from the traditional or I guess premium Model Y. Not to mention the Optimus updates, the full self-driving updates, robo-taxi updates, Tesla has been busy. But for nearly everything we've seen, they're really just updates on products we already have. I mean, yeah, Optimus is new, but it's not really a product you can get. Everything else, though, is just incremental updates to make the products better and better, which I'm not against. That's a good thing. But with those updates, it makes me want to look to the future for what comes next. And really, the biggest place to look and where we've seen some recent leaks and updates is with CyberCab. It's been basically exactly a year since we got the We Robots event that launched the CyberCab, the RoboTaxi, and that we got to see what Tesla's vision of the future and what the vision of future autonomy is going to look like. And this was a pretty radical launch. I mean, typically Tesla doesn't announce something that they don't plan to release for real, something you can buy. Uh, well, usually at least. Really, it's just a question of timing. And with CyberCab, that question of timing was really the big question I had because the product itself seems great. It's a small two-door EV that has a ton of space both in the front and in the rear if you want to carry you know luggage or anything like that. The design is well subjective but I personally think it looks pretty cool. It's got that futuristic design for sure but where it gets crazy is that it is fully autonomous. There's no steering wheel. It's just a screen on the inside. The doors automatically open for you. This is the future of their ride hailing service or at least it's supposed to be. But because of those really radical changes, the fact that it doesn't have a wheel, well, I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you thought there's no way that this is ever actually going to come to the market, or at least not for years and years to come. But it seems from recent leaks that that might actually not be the case and that we will actually see this thing on the road pretty soon. Real quick, though, before we continue, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Jackery. This is their Solar Generator 1000 V2. I've been using this for months and months at this point. It's one of my go-to power stations. And these days, it seems that everything needs power in some way, shape, or form. So having more of it, well, that's never a bad thing, especially when you can take it with you. Now, this is a 1,070 watt hour battery, and it has 1,500 watts of AC power. So you can power a ton of things like coffee makers, appliances, CPAP machines. I mean, really anything you need, it can power it as long as it's within the limit. And for me, I use these when I'm out on the go like in the mountains. I've got a refrigerator that I can power with it. I've got, you know, a heated blanket I can power. Like I said, seems like everything these days needs to be plugged in. Well, this lets me keep going. But this is able to do all of that in a package that is 18% smaller than the previous generation. And it's 30% lighter too. So if you're packing it in a rig or taking it around with you, it's not only going to be less heavy, but also going to fit in more places, which is always nice. Now, like I said, you're able to plug in pretty much anything, and that's thanks to the ports that are inside. You get three three AC ports, got two USB-C, it's got a USB-A port, it's got a car port. Like I said, if you need to plug something in, well, you're going to be able to do it with this. Now, if you are using this, of course, eventually it's going to run out of power. And that means you got to recharge it. And that's where this really comes in handy because you can go from zero to 100% in just one hour. Or if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to charge with solar, if you use their Solar Saga solar panels, which are 200 watt each, two of those can get this up to 100% in just 3.8 hours. But best of all, your investment is safe because this uses LFP batteries inside, which means that they're going to last quite a while. If you use this thing for 10 years, you should still have 70% capacity. So if you're in the market for something like this, and I definitely recommend everyone have a battery pack like this, check out the links down in the description. You'll be able to find the best prices possible. And if you've been considering picking up a battery like this, well, Jackery is one of the best places to start.
Okay, so we got two big new CyberCab spottings that tell us, I think, a lot about what is going on at Tesla with this product. First is that it was spotted driving at the Fremont factory. This is in California. And what this means is that it's kind of graduated into a more real product. This is where they start doing the real world development to see how it actually interacts with the world around it. It's not just in prototype stage, not just as a concept, but what is this thing actually like to drive around the real world? Historically, with other Tesla products, when it moves on to the Fremont factory, that's what this means, which means that, again, they have done significant development to this and that it has moved to that stage in the process. Now, to be fair, on its own, it's not a huge development. This could be at the Fremont factory for any number of reasons. This is just historically usually what happens. But at nearly the same time, we also got a drone video from the Giga Texas factory where we got to see a cyber cab that was seemingly used for crash tests. In this video, you can see the CyberCab kind of pulled apart a little bit and in a building. And well, apparently this is showing that they are doing impact trials and just working on crash testing. And so these two spottings, well, they probably mean that the CyberCab has left lab testing where they do everything in secret. And now they have to move on to actually testing the car in the real world. And that, well, that's a big deal. Add on to that, this tweet, which doesn't say much, but is interesting nonetheless, is from Tesla's principal mechanical design engineer who is working on CyberCab. And he said in a response to Sawyer Merritt, who was talking about how it's been a year since the release of the CyberCab. But in response, he said that it is so good and way better than it was a year ago as well. Of course, this isn't like a shocking admission by one of the people working on the car. Of course, they're going to hype it up. But him saying that this is much better than what we first saw a year ago, well, that is pretty exciting because there's a lot of things that needed to be fleshed out, needed to be worked out. And it seems that maybe they're actually doing that. Now, all of that together and in such a short time period means that, well, Tesla is full steam ahead in trying to make this car real and actually hit the roads. They're on from the lab development onto real world testing, both in crash tests and in design. And given that they said a 2026 date is when we expect to see this on the road, well, maybe they might actually hit that. Well, maybe. And I say maybe because the biggest question here actually has absolutely nothing to do with the car itself but rather the software that it's running because CyberCab is unique from every other Tesla. This doesn't have a steering wheel, or at least it didn't when they first showed it off. And so if that's what it's still going to be, well, full self-driving needs to become real more real than it is right now, at least. Now, luckily, we have seen a huge update to that in the last few months. Version 14 has started to drop and it's rolling out to customers now. And this really does seem like it's worthy of that, you know, number upgrade where it was from 13 to 14 because there's a ton of improvements here. Things like being able to learn your driving style and adapt to it, or being able to teach it where you want to park and it learning that, hey, we'll park here instead of across the parking lot. Even being able to navigate navigate parking garages and find a parking spot. All the things that you need a full self-driving car to actually do for the real world, it's starting to actually get there. And it's clear that Tesla is moving from a car company that also does autonomy to an autonomy company that also makes products that are mobile. The car will simply be a delivery mechanism for full self-driving, which is the actual product. And for the CyberCab, that's exactly what is needed. The software has to be the real product and what you're driving in doesn't matter all that much. And that's exactly why the CyberCab was designed the way it was. It's meant for that autonomous future where, you know, maybe you do own one, but you don't really need to. You just hail the car to you, opens the doors for you, you get in, relax, enjoy the big screen, get to your destination, and that's it. And that future, I mean, it doesn't seem too far away. I've ridden in, you know, Waymo, for example, which has been launched for a while now, and that very much feels like the future. It's just like any other ride hailing service, there's just no one actually driving the car. But it was seamless, it was easy, I didn't have to talk to anyone, it was exactly the way I want these types of rides to go. And for a city like San Francisco, which is where I was, it was perfect. But here where I live in Utah, it's much more rural, much more spread out. I mean, I live here in the Utah Valley, but 30 minutes away way is Salt Lake City, man, I go there pretty often. And I don't know that I want a taxi experience for all of that driving. Driving from place to place here is very spread out and takes a while. And that's not unique. There's many places across the country that are like that. And so that's why I think what Tesla is doing, let me glaze them a little bit here, what they're doing and making full self driving just work everywhere for every situation, even though it's not quite there yet. I think that's the right move because today I can hop in a Model Y and it can drive me basically anywhere I want to go. And I'm doing it 
it in comfort and it's my car. Whereas if we had like Waymo, for example, yeah, it would be great if I needed to go to the airport or something, but uh, that's not great for my everyday life because I just don't live in a city. That's just my personal experience. That's not the way I use a car or feel like I need to use a car. But full self-driving in my experience actually solves that issue. It just needs to actually get all the way there and well, it seems like it's getting close, but that's really what it comes down to. When full self-driving will be a real product, something that they can launch and use anywhere without much restriction at all. Because without that, I don't know how useful a cyber cab really is. I mean, sure, they can build just a few of them for their own robo taxi fleet, but that didn't seem to be the ultimate goal when they launched it. It seems like they really want people to buy these and use them as their own cars. But if full self-driving just isn't reliable, I still need a steering wheel so I can take over every once in a while. But even with all those questions up in the air, Tesla seems to be full steam ahead at trying to make this future world a reality. And considering CyberCab is still in full development and seems like it's moving along nicely, that gets me pretty excited.